What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome to another FPL video for the 2021-22 season. So FPL have started revealing some prices already. They've done about eight teams so far, at least at the time of recording this. I've got to go out this evening. It's Father's Day. We're going out for a meal and all that good stuff. So I can't wait around to see if there's any more. If I've missed any, then I'll do those reactions tomorrow. But it does sound like FPL is going to launch relatively soon. I'd be surprised if it's not out in the next kind of four to five days, maybe even earlier if they've already done eight teams and there might still be some more to come today so if you enjoy it give it a like hit that subscribe button i'm just going to react to all the teams the prices so far obviously we're not going to go into massive detail because there's still fixtures and captaincy and injuries and signings and loads of new stuff to think about before we start locking some players into our teams but i'll tell you now there are at least three players that I would not be surprised if they're in my Game Week 1 squad all the way in August. So I am looking quite far ahead. But like I said, if you enjoy these videos, do give them a like. And if uh, if there's enough likes, enough watches and stuff, I'll do another one tomorrow when we get some more um, price reveals as well. So let's just jump into it. We're going to go straight one by one. I'm going to do this all in one take, hopefully. So Arsenal, I think, was the first one that we saw. Fixtures-wise, they got three good fixtures out of their first six and three difficult ones. So they're probably in a void straight away. When this news came out, as happens all the time on Twitter, suddenly it was like, well, Pepe's a good price. Pepe's definitely going to be in my team. I do think 7.5 is a nice price that we should consider. But obviously, as with everything, we've got to wait until we see all the prices for all the teams before we start locking too many players in. So Pepe is more interesting than he was last year. But I don't know if I'd call him a lock yet. Smith Rowe maybe is a cheap fourth midfielder, depending on where the rest of the budget goes. When you see some of the other prices, there's some expensive players out there. Aubameyang is back to a forward after being a midfielder last year. He's 10 million. He's got a bit of a price drop, but there's just no way I'm going there, right? Not with Chelsea and Man City in the opening three. So not too badly priced with Pepe. And Aubameyang, look, never say never. I think one thing to remember when you see prices is, there's players you can bring in at any point just because they're no good for the start of the season doesn't mean they'll always be no good so never say never but i'm saying no to arsenal straight away next up we got brighton a lot of people were looking forward to this because their fixtures to start off are so good it is a sea of green everton could possibly be a little bit more difficult than green but ultimately burnley watford everton brentford palace five out of your first six are pretty decent and your toughest fixtures leicester we're not even talking chelsea liverpool man city they're good fixtures. Sanchez is, Sanchez is coming at 4.5. I'm telling you right now, he is everybody's goalkeeper for game week one. Guaita, he's also 4.5 that we'll see in a sec. But Brighton's defense seriously underperformed last year. He's in. I'm locking him in already. I just don't see how I go for anybody else, right? Gross, 6 million. If he gets regular starts, is not a bad option on penalties. Trossard, 6.5 million. Again, let's wait and see till we get all the prices. But if the, the price of a lot of forwards has gone up, we might even be looking at 3-5-2 drafts and stuff like that as well. Basuma still in as a 4.5. Not too badly priced. I've seen a lot of people saying that Basuma, what if he gets transferred elsewhere? That's really good. But he's not. surely he's not going to suddenly start playing like number 10 for someone, right? So he's still going to be a more defensively minded midfielder. Not getting us goals, not getting us assists. And if he goes to a better team... He's taken a slot from a team that we might at some point want to triple up on. So 4.5, I never discount them because I like to have bench fodder in my team so that I can put more value in my first 11. So not writing Basuma off. I, I don't see, I don't get all this talk about him being better if he goes to like a Liverpool or somewhere like that because then he just takes up a Liverpool spot. And as we'll see in a minute, Liverpool are looking pretty valuable. Um, Burnley up next. Nick Pope keeps his 5.5 million price. Too expensive. Not interested at all. Chris Wood's gone up to seven. So it's going to be really interesting to see the rest of the forward prices. You know, like so Bamford, Watkins all need to go up in price. Calvert-Lewin will probably go up in price as well. We've got the newly promoted players. What will they come in at? So seven million, again, never say never. But the starting fixtures include Liverpool. Brighton's still pretty tricky, by the way. Arsenal and Leicester in their first six. So I think they're in a void. Tarkowski and me could be good prices. It'd be interesting to see what price the fullbacks are. Um, so the likes of Taylor, Loughton, etc. If they're 4.5 again, that could be a nice route into a defence that has sometimes or in the past been extremely good. 
But last year, defensively, their underlying numbers, their expected data, expected goals conceded, and stuff like that, wasn't good. They were one of the tar- uh, they were the one of the fixtures to target towards the end of the season. So not writing them off, but the prices don't really tempt me so far. Crystal Palace. So this is when we we got another four point five million keeper Guaita. But look at the fixtures they've got to open. Right, the easiest ones Brentford. Outside of that, it's Chelsea, Liverpool, Spurs. All difficult. And even their other two that aren't green or not, you know, not red or cherry red, whatever, they're still difficult enough, Brighton and West Ham. So the fixtures aren't great. Guaita 4.5 is just no match for Sanchez. Even if the longer term fixtures were better for Palace, you just put Sanchez in, I think, at 4.5 and then perhaps wildcard early and then you're going to swap him anyway. And if not, you just set and forget him for the time being. Zaha's still 7 million. It feels like he's always 7 million. Midfielder, um, I think most of the time he lined up on, on the left of the the striker. So it's an okay price. He did well last season, to be honest. I kind of overlooked him quite a lot. But I, I think we need to see who comes in and manages them. How many signings do they make? They've got a lot of players out of contract. A lot of players that they've released already. So it's a, it's a massive rebuild project at Palace, I would say. Mitchell in at 4.5. We don't know what Ferguson is yet. Maybe he's going to be 4 million. Uh, and Benteke 6.5. Don't write him off at that price, okay? We haven't seen all the prices of the cheap strikers yet. And like I said just a minute ago, a lot are probably going to go up in price. Benteke doesn't look that bad. Right? I'm not saying you start with him, but he might be in our teams at some point. Um, Leeds is really interesting. So Melier got a lot of saves last year. He did score a lot of points. So he's gone up to 5 million, which is fair enough. I expected Sanchez to be the same price, but they've obviously gone off points and clean sheets rather than maybe expected data. So we can maybe get one over everyone else by looking at the likes of Sanchez. So Melier is not a complete avoid of 5 million, but their fixtures aren't the greatest to start off. Burnley and Newcastle in game week 3 and 5 are the best options. The two prices that stand out here, look, Cooper's 4.5. I suspect Ailing might still be 4.5 as well. He could be pretty decent. But the two prices that stand out are Bamford and Rafinha. So Bamford, I think 8 is fine. He did so well last year. He's on penalties. It's a fair price for an attacking team like Leeds and how many goals he got. Rafinha is massively underpriced, in my opinion. And the, the way I'm thinking about that is, when people were asking me what kind of price he would be this year... I was saying like 7, 7.5, even 8 million. Even at 8 million, I think Rafinha should be considered. And he's 6.5, right? The fixtures aren't ideal. But from an attacking perspective, we know what leads are like. So Burnley, Newcastle, West Ham, Everton, they're not that bad. So 6.5 million, that is going to be hard to beat. So Rafinha is a price I really like. Bamford, Probably not so much. Again, never say, you know, no to the whole season, right? And don't be so narrow kind of mind or narrow narrow field of view that you don't consider him for game week one. But Rafinha, 6.5, that is crazy value. So Sanchez and Rafinha, I'm already pretty much locking them in. I won't lie. Um, Liverpool, so funnily enough, for whatever reason, they released the whole Liverpool price list on the app. So through the app, there was a link to a website. And on that website, they had all the prices. I won't go through all of them, but there's some interesting ones to talk about. For some reason, Firmino's still nine or over. He needs to be like eight to consider him, right? At some point during the season, you might go for him. But with Trent, Robertson, Salah, Mane, Firmino just doesn't ever get a look in. He takes up a forward slot. I don't know. I just think it's a rubbish price. Elsewhere, Salah's up to 12.5. I think he was 12 last year. I think that's fine. I think Salah's just so good every single year. Mane had to be cheaper than this year because last year they were the same price. It wasn't even a conversation. You had to go for Salah if you were just having one. Of course, there were stages of the season where you might need a differential. But when Salah's got penalties, there's no contest whatsoever. It's still not really a contest. There's a 0.5 million difference. Salah's 12.5. Mane's 12. Look, Mane is good enough to get the points to warrant a 12 million player. He's not on penalties. He's he's similarly priced to other highly priced players like Salah, like Kane, we'll find out in a minute. It's a tricky one to put him in game week one. Obviously, there could be injuries to other big players. We might need a way to spend our money, and Mane might be in. And Liverpool fixtures look very good for a double or triple up, like Norwich, Burnley, Leeds, Palace, Brentford. They are good fixtures. So Salah's pretty much a lock for me. I think he is. You could captain him in like four or five of those first six. So Salah, Sanchez, Rafinha already looking like good good, good picks for my squad. Mane not so much. Jota's 7.5. What a bargain that could potentially be. If someone from the front three gets injured, 
Jota's minutes suddenly go right up. 7.5, that's a bargain. Let's see if one of them gets sold as well. So I, I really would keep an eye on that. Trent, 7.5. Robertson is a bit less at 7. And Van Dijk's a bit less again at 6.5. So don't rule them out. Canate as well is only 5.5. Surely he is going to be the main centre-back next to Van Dijk when everyone's fit. So 5.5 into the Liverpool defence. Definitely keep an eye on that one. Right now I'm thinking Salah, Trent plus one other. I think you just try and start with the highest priced players if you can, right? Especially with those fixtures. They're just ridiculous. Norwich fixtures are awful. These are complete avoid for me. Liverpool, City, Leicester, Arsenal to start off. Pookie's only six, though. So that already gives us a kind of feel of where they're pricing the strikers. So Benteke was 6.5. Bamford went all the way up to eight. But they're not completely ruling out cheap prices for some of these players. So Pookie at six looks like a poor option for the start because of the fixtures. But from game week five onwards, if you go for an early wild card, Norwich are looking okay. Don't rule him out. Goalkeeper, 4.5 and cruel. Hanley, again, one of the defensive options, 4.5. Uh, and Jay, uh, I assume that's James McLean. I've not even researched the squad yet. Uh, but even if it's not, 5 million midfielder, maybe. Okay, but Norwich just no good for the start, right? Those first four, four fixtures are pretty awful, especially the first two. And I know Pookie scored. I think it was the first game against Liverpool the last time they were up. But he ain't come, I don't think he's coming near my squad. Unless I need a cheap striker. Never say never. Never get locked into your picks this early on. But I'm saying no. I'm saying no. Again. Um, last one up is Spurs. Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal in their first six. Not great, but they do have Watford and Palace. Kane is 12.5 million. It's too expensive. In my opinion, it's too expensive. I know he did really, really well last year. But 12.5, he's still a forward. I know he's on penalties. The bonus is good for forwards, I get it. But the likes of Salah just get extra point for goal, extra point for the clean sheet. Very hard to make a case for him. Although, if he goes to Man City, 12.5 for a nailed on number nine at Man City. Who knows? That could be great value because they got some pretty good fixtures as well. Lloris is 5.5, um, which isn't bad. Hoiberg comes in at 5, whatever, we ain't going for him. Uh, and Son's up to 10. That's a fair rise for Son. Son has been below the level he performs at for a long time when it comes to prices. So I don't hate that price at all. 10 million. Yes, it's obviously hard to fit him in, but this always happens. Right? I've already seen comments like, how are we going to build a team? This player is way too expensive. We're going to have no cheap options. There's always bargains to be found. So don't write off Son just yet. But Kane at 12.5, it just feels a bit expensive. It just feels a bit expensive. Let me know what you think in the comments below, though, about all these prices. So I was just about to render the video and upload it. They dropped the West Ham price. So I'm going to try and fit it in at the end. Hopefully it sounds okay. Uh, Newcastle, Palace, Southampton, and Leeds. Good fixtures to start off. Obviously, Man United and Leicester's not great. But the rest of the fixtures are quite good. And you can't necessarily have perfect fixtures for the whole time. So I do like the Antonio price at 7.5. Bearing in mind that Bamford's coming at 8. When he's fit, Antonio's the man. I would expect West Ham to sign some players, okay, including a forward. They can't rely on Antonio for the whole season. His fitness is just not up to scratch. But 7.5 is decent. Socek's up to 6, expected to have a price rise. I don't think that's out of the question. Um, he scored quite a few goals last year, but he's not an option for me. I think he got a bit lucky with that purple patch, and he is quite attacking, right? He does like to get in for those headers. But I think for six, he's probably not someone I'd start with. And Cresswell and so far, 5.5 and 5. It's, I think it's too expensive. I know West Ham was decent last year, and I'm not completely ruling it out. But on first look, even with these fixtures, I'm just not sure about Cresswell. But he was so attacking last year. It'd be interesting to see whether they go to a back four or a back five. Um, obviously, in a back four, he's more likely to play left back. In a back five, he was at times playing as the left centre back. But he does take a lot of set pieces, so I'm not completely ruling him out. But Antonio at 7.5, I do like. That's my thoughts. Right now, Rafinha looking great, Salah looking great, Trent and Sanchez all looking good. We still need the rest of the player prices. I have a feeling we'll have the game in the next few days. I don't know that. If anyone knows, by the way, feel free to slide into my DMs on Twitter. Uh, but the fact they've already released eight prices, eight lots of prices, they're probably going to reveal even more by the time this video is out, uh, which I can react to tomorrow. Uh, I think it could be out soon. So get ready for some FPL content. The, the Euros content's not stopping, by the way. I'm still going to carry on with that. Uh, but yeah, if you've enjoyed that, please do give it a like. It lets me know if I should do another one. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. And most importantly, comment below. Let me know what you think about these prices. Who's locked in and who are you definitely avoiding?